This is a summary of the CPIG dosing guideline for thiopurines and variation in the genes TPMT and NUD-T15. This video will specifically discuss the dosing guidelines for azathioprine. Videos covering the dosing guidelines for mercaptopurine and thioguanine can be found on the PharmGKB website and on the PharmGKB YouTube channel. This guideline was last updated in February 2019. Due to the risk of fatal toxicity in TPMT poor metabolizers and the increased risk of myelosuppression in TPMT or NUD-T15 poor metabolizers, the guideline recommends the use of alternative therapies or a drastic dose reduction in these patients. A dose reduction is also recommended for TPMT or NUD-T15 intermediate metabolizers. This image is a simplified version of the FARM-GKB thiopurine pathway. A link to the original pathway is provided in the description below this video. Azathioprine is a prodrug of mercaptopurine and is used to treat a number of malignant and non-malignant diseases. Azathioprine is converted to mercaptopurine in the body, which is then extensively metabolized in cells to ultimately form active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. These active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites are cytotoxic. The TPMT protein encoded by the TPMT gene inactivates mercaptopurine and several metabolites by methylation. This reduces the number of molecules available for conversion into active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. The NUD-T15 protein encoded by the NUD-T15 gene converts active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites to inactive thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. This reduces the level of cytotoxic active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. If a patient has low or deficient TPMT activity, more molecules are available for conversion into active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. This puts the patient at an increased risk of severe or fatal toxicity and at an increased risk of myelosuppression. It should be noted that some adverse reactions to thiopurine treatment, including pancreatitis and hepatotoxicity, are not linked to TPMT activity. If a patient has low or deficient NUD-T15 activity, the levels of active thioguanine nucleotide metabolites are increased. This puts the patient at an increased risk of developing myelosuppression. Patients can be assigned a TPMT metabolizer phenotype based on the functional status of their TPMT alleles. This table shows the different metabolizer phenotypes that can be assigned along with example diplotypes. This information can also be found in Table 1 of the guideline. Metabolizer phenotypes can also be assigned to NUD-T15 diplotypes, as shown in this table adapted from Table 1 of the guideline. Gene information tables for NUD-T15, including a diplotype phenotype table, are also available on the PharmGKB website. A link to the NUD-T15 gene information tables is given in the description below this video. Note that the functional status of some TPMT and NUD-T15 haplotypes have not yet been characterised. These are listed as having an unknown effect on the function of TPMT or NUD-T15 and should be interpreted with caution on a genetic test. An important caveat for all genotyping tests is that a normal function status is given to all alleles which are not detected in the assay. This can include rare reduced function or non-functional alleles which are not routinely screened for in some genotyping tests. These are the CPIC dosing recommendations for azathioprine by TPMT phenotype. Patients who are TPMT normal metabolizers will have lower concentrations of thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. These patients are also at a normal risk of thiopurine related myelosuppression and can be given the normal starting dose of azathioprine. This is a strong recommendation. Patients who are TPMT intermediate metabolizers or TPMT possible intermediate metabolizers will have moderate to high concentrations of thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. These patients are also at an increased risk of thiopurine related myelosuppression and should be started at a reduced dose of azathioprine. This is a strong recommendation. Patients who are TPMT poor metabolizers will have extremely high concentrations of thioguanine nucleotide metabolites. These patients are also at a greatly increased risk of thiopurine-related myelosuppression. 
alternative therapies should be considered for the treatment of non-malignant conditions in these patients. In cases of malignancy, patients should be started at a drastically reduced dose of azathioprine. This is a strong recommendation. The dosing recommendations for azathioprine by TPMT phenotype, in addition to those for mercaptopurine and thioguanine, can be found in Table 2 of the guideline. Detailed footnotes pertaining to the recommendations can be found at the bottom of this table. These are the CPIC dosing recommendations for azathioprine by NUD-T15 phenotype. Patients who are NUD-T15 normal metabolizers are at a normal risk of thiopurine-related myelosuppression. These patients can be given the normal starting dose of azathioprine. This is a strong recommendation. Patients who are NUD-T15 intermediate metabolizers or NUD-T15 possible intermediate metabolizers are at an increased risk of thiopurine-related myelosuppression. These patients should be started at a reduced dose of azathioprine. This is a strong recommendation. Patients who are NUD-T15 poor metabolizers are at a greatly increased risk of thiopurine-related myelosuppression. Alternative therapies should be considered for the treatment of non-malignant conditions in these patients. In cases of malignancy, patients should be started at a drastically reduced dose. This is a strong recommendation. The dosing recommendations for azathioprine by NUD-T15 phenotype, in addition to those for mercaptopurine and thioguanine, can be found in Table 3 of the guideline. Detailed footnotes pertaining to the recommendations can be found at the bottom of this table. Figure 2 in the guideline shows how to select an appropriate prescribing action if both the TPMT and NUD-T15 genotypes of a patient are known. Detailed footnotes are given in the figure legend. Although there have been reports of patients who are TPMT and NUD-T15 intermediate metabolizers, there is limited evidence on appropriate dosing recommendations specifically for these patients. A further dose reduction may be required for patients who are intermediate metabolizers at both TPMT and NUD-T15 compared with those who are only intermediate metabolizers for one of these genes. This guideline has been annotated on the Farm GKB website. This includes a drop down menu where an activity summary can be given for specific combinations of TPMT and NUD T15 alleles. The activity summary includes implications for the patient's response to azathioprine, the appropriate dosing recommendation for the specific combination of metabolizer phenotypes, and the strength of that recommendation. Remember that variation in other genes, in addition to demographic and clinical factors, including concomitant medications, can affect treatment. It remains the responsibility of the clinician to determine the best course of treatment for a patient. CPIC and PharmGKB assume no responsibility for any injury to persons or damage to persons or property arising out of or related to any use of CPIC's guideline or for any errors or omissions. The guideline itself and supplementary information are freely available at the Farm GKB and CPIC websites. You can access relevant pages using the links in the description below this video.